All right, guys. Uh, hoping to put this video out and hopefully help someone in the future. If y'all plan on doing something like this, I'm doing the AC system on this 90 Suburban. And I wanted to put this before the video just to share some things that I messed up or had wrong from the beginning to hopefully save y'all. But the AC is working now and it's doing great. I uh, drove it to work this morning and on the way home today is about 95 degrees out here in Florida. AC's blown out of the vents about 42 degrees. So everything is working, but it wasn't easy. It took me a whole weekend and a lot of trips to the store. So hopefully I can go over that stuff with y'all so y'all don't have the same problems I do. And with that being said, I'll flip you around and show you some of the problems I had and show you what I got set up right now before y'all watch the video. So starting out, you're gonna notice, if you watch the video, you're gonna see me put a new compressor in there. That is the old compressor. I have a new compressor that was 220 something dollars, part of the Rock Auto kit. Um, first initial startup, the compressor would not turn even without putting free on, trying to get the clutch. I didn't even have this wire connected. I just put the belt on and you'll see why in the video I put the belt on because I figured I didn't have the, wrong, the right fittings for the AC system to begin with. So I was like, let's make sure the compressor turns and if anything, I can drive it to work because I have to take the same work on Monday. So put the new compressor in, put the belt on, started it and had my buddy over here helping. You'll see in the video, he immediately gave me the shut it down signal because that thing started throwing sparks and smoking. So I have the old compressor, pardon the mess, but it's right. The new compressor sitting right there. It's about to get shipped back. And that is the old one, but the old one is still working. And everything I've read up on these old GM, I think R4 is what they're called, or 4R, the pancake style compressors, is kind of hard to kill. And this one proved that they see is working flawless with this one. So save yourself the money and try to use yours. I did flush this before I put it on because I wanted to get all the old oil out. And everything I read said it's not that big of a deal, but I wanted to get it out because it's been sitting dry for so long. So I put new pag oil in it after I flushed it, and I let it sit upside down to try to lubricate the seal on the backside. And so far, I'm not leaking any refrigerant. Everything's still working. It's been about two, three days since I've been using AC. Other problem I had is I bought the kit and it was supposed to be an adaptive to the R134 system. Well, it was not because I had to use the original hose, which is still the high side, so I couldn't even hook a gauge up to this one. And then my low side, I had to buy this adapter from O'Reilly's. I bought the kit. Um, probably should have had this one, but I bought this kit here. And it came with a lot more. I used some of them, and I took some of the O-rings out. It, it worked, though, for the for the low side right there. And I don't know if there's a part number or anything on here. Maybe you can look it up by that number. But that kit came with this fitting, so I was able to fill the system. All right, so that's some of the issue I had. The other issue, as you'll see in the video, is I'll take you to the front here. And that condenser is about three inches smaller than the original that came out of the truck and I put it in rock auto and it said fit my vehicle, all that stuff. You guys know how that goes with the knockoff parts, but all I did, you'll see in the video is we just used self-tapping screws where, where it lined up and drilled into the core support and you can't even tell because the radiator is blocking it. So that was part of the issue we were running into. And another big issue I had that was fighting us for most of the day after I got all this thing put back together is this right here. That is your switch for the back. I forget what they call it on Rock Auto, but this thing controls the evaporator coil in the back. And right here on this side, if y'all do this on yours, an O-ring goes inside of this, but there's a brass, brass shim that goes on top of this. When I took this thing apart, it all looked like one piece, and I put the new one in without that shim, and it kept leaking. Figured I was, I finally got fed up, and I was about to put this one back in. And... That's when I started messing around with it and that shim came apart and because it was basically glued itself to the old, old O-ring. So make sure you get that little shim off because if not, I'll show you in the rear. In my tools and boots, I use this thing every day. Right there. And where it kept leaking is right here, this nut. This is an adapter for the hose. That brass shim goes on the inside of this one right here. So make sure you get that piece back in or it will keep leaking. That's on me totally. I messed that up. And uh, I'm still waiting on my blower to come in for the back of this because this thing, it's froze. I got it freed up on my workbench, but then put it in there and it keeps blowing fuses. So I got a new blower motor coming. But I just wanted to 
show y'all some of the stuff before I release the video. I wanted to put this in the beginning because I know me personally, I hate when you watch a whole video and then at the end they're like, oh, by the way, don't forget this, this, and this, and you already got half the vehicle put together. So this is, my daughter Rose came out to say hi. Uh, this is the uh, a good working system originally and everything I read said it would be. So I'll release the video. It definitely by no means step-by-step. Step. So if y'all have any questions about anything and just let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer them the best I can. I'm not an expert on this, as I say multiple times in there, but it does work now and everything is going good. So with that being said, I'll, I'll put the video out for y'all. Thanks. So as you can see, radiators are out and the condenser is pulled out. Just so y'all know the condenser, there's two bolts on the top here where it screws in and you pull those out and then you undo your two ac lines coming into it right here don't mind these uh radiator hoses is redneck engineer uh, but that's also why i got a new radiator but that's another story so and i've already broke these free and if you're anything like my shop and unorganized you're not going to find these big wrenches an inch and a quarter these two and i think these are like one inch or inch and 16 so adjustables for both of these and probably the same thing for down there which is probably what you're not supposed to do but we're gonna get it done anyway so that's what i'm about to work on now is get the dryer out and then get the compressor off so we can get all this stuff out and start putting the new stuff in all right let's start taking this stuff off like i said i already broke these free and adjustable and put these off Pressure switch, take that off. Probably not supposed to make that noise, but it's off. All right. And then, looks like we got seven sixteenths right here. Get the dryer out. Open these lines. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we'll get that off. Let's see. Nope. All right, so another problem I have with this 90 square body, the Suburban anyway, is some things are metric and some things are standard. It just happens to be a pin. All right, dryer's off. Careful not to break this thing, because I'm gonna try to reuse it, but it'll probably leak, so I'll probably have to replace that too. All right. You can get the plug out of the way. It just comes off. It's real loose. I might have to adjust that. But get that out of my way first. So I break it. Drop my tools everywhere. And then get the belt off. Pull the tensioner up. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh. Don't be like me, guys. All right. Get that out of the way. Next, we'll work on getting the AC lines off the back. And that's probably what fell. That it is. All right, so half inch on the back there. Like I said, I don't know if yours will be the same because they never are. Okay. Mine's awfully loose too. So. AC's never worked since I've owned it, so I'm not really sure if any of this stuff works. I just figured I'd start new to eliminate any problems in the future because this thing takes a lot of refrigerant, and I don't want to keep having to refill it. All right, get that out of the way. Now it looks like there's three bolts holding the compressor on. Sounds good. Three bolts holding the compressor on. I'll probably hold on to this. Looks like 9 sixteenths. Someone's grinding down the bolt. Let me see if I can blow that back. Okay, it worked. All right. Let's see if we can get this one.
This one has a flat spot, but it looks like factory. So I'm wondering if they had to clearance it. We'll see. One more all the way in the bottom here. So I see why the flat spot's on there. <laughs> the bottom one goes in only from the front because of the valve cover. And you have to be able to clear the pulley. That one's grind down too. So I'm guessing whoever put this AC compressor on before me didn't know that it had the factory one in there and grind it down another bolt. Tripod time. Nope, got it. Get in there. Right. Let's see if I can show you what I was talking about here. So it's got the grinded spot there, and to clear that pulley, it has to come in from the front here, and it'll hit there if you don't have it on the grind spot. So. It gets wedged, won't go in anymore. But if you put it on the flat, it goes all the way in. Just so y'all know when you do it. All right, I'm gonna work on getting these hoses disconnected the rest of the way. Um, I am gonna take it off from here because I'm positive there's an O-ring in it. And I need to get this off anyway because I think after I get all these hoses off, I'm gonna call it for today and go in the morning and pick up I, I did some research and I think they make a flush you can use for these AC systems and I'd really like the flush this evaporator coil and these hoses before I put all these new parts in there. So let's get started on that. And I'll start with the bottom one first, I guess. That looks looks like five eighths. Let's see. Okay, it is five eighths. I might have to put a hole back on this big guy. Let's see, three quarter. Try seven eighths. Big wrench here. Okay, seven eighths fits on that. All right. That one's on. If anyone's curious, this does have the rear AC system. If yours doesn't, you probably don't even have any of these. These are just for the rear AC, these two lines here. All right, let's see now. Got that one free. Should be, looks like another three quarter here. All right. Oh, God. Tighter than I expected. No, honestly, I probably should have cleaned all this stuff first. This is why I'm going to end up flushing them anyway. Because I don't want all this crap in there, but... No one ever said I was smart. It's working. I don't know if it's right, but I'm using carb cleaner because I want to clean it off, but I want it to evaporate out, and I don't want it to get into the lines. I don't want to use any kind of penetrating oil. So, like I said, not an AC guy. So, let's go ahead and do this one while we're here, right? And I'm 
I'm trying to keep, if you can see, I'm trying to keep all the O-rings on these. I got the new green ones they say you have to use. Um, I'm trying to keep them all on so when I go to replace it with the new parts, I can switch them over as needed so I can try to match up the size. And so the orifice tube is in there. So I'm going to have to try to get that out. But I think I'm going to go ahead and get this other line broke loose first, and then we can get this whole piece out. And like I said, tomorrow I can get some flush and flush out all these lines before I put it on the new new. All right, y'all. I'm going to try to get this orifice tube out. Let's see. Okay, I feel like that's really hard. I don't want to break this little bit. Oh, there it comes. <laughs> all right. I know it's just plastic. Oh, okay. I don't think this AC was working. Uh, like I said, not an AC guy, but that does not look good. That's bad. Okay, so definitely going to be looking into some flush. That'll probably be it for the night, and I'll probably get to see y'all in the morning. But don't want to leave that in there. We'll be back in the morning. All right, guys, this next day out here, I did end up going and getting this power clean and flush I read through it real quick it says to put it in there you can do it in the evaporator coil it says don't do it in the compressor or the dryer obviously um, so I can flush it out here and then it says to flush it out with compressed air all right so looks like it has this little cone so I'm gonna try to hold pressure with my hand in there keep it upright and push cap and see what happens Surprisingly, it doesn't look that bad coming out. Making a mess though, so let me reset up the rag, see if I can catch this a little better. All right. Well, it's looking pretty clean coming out, so let's get the compressed air up here. Readjust. That's making a damn mess. Be back. All right, take two. So I'm gonna see if I can hold a rag over the bottom there and kind of catch this stuff. Cause it is going everywhere. guys uh rear ac off of the suburban just quick things i know i didn't show you guys me taking it off but it's a little different for y'all because mine's missing all the interior trim anyway in the back so you would have had a cover over all this and this is the bottom when you get in there and look up in the rear this is what you're going to see here with the blowers another thing i found out is my blowers froze so the motors froze up so i have to repair that but i needed to get these two lines off to get it off of the roof this line and this line are your ac lines going to this rear uh, rear wrapper rear coil in here and then I got a new pressure switch going right here that I need to replace but as far as these two lines this one was a 7 8 here and I used an adjustable because I didn't have one to fit it but it's probably a 1 inch or an inch 16 this was a 5 8 and a 3 quarter you get these two off and get this off that holds the two lines running right here you'll see them running down this way and then they'll come down here and tie into these and I, there was mineral oil coming out of that when I took it off, so don't let that stuff drip all over you. But I just wanted to show you all that. And as far as getting this off of the seal, and if anyone's curious, there were two screws on either side of here. I think it was seven millimeter and two, two here, one there, one over here. And those were 10. So those, you take those four screws out and it'll come down. And then there should be only one wire. At least that's what it was for mine. And it was a purple right here pretty thick gauge wire 
go into here. So you unclip that purple, take the four screws out. It'll come down. I let mine come down because there's a lot of slop in the hose because it's rubber running up. So I did all the screws, let it come down, and then did the hoses just sitting on the trunk. That, I felt like that was easier than trying to do them overhead. But you can do it however you want. Um, now what I'm about to do is I'm about to take the top cover off so I can get to that temperature switch for the back. I, I don't know if it's called temperature switch, but control switch or whatever it is. Right here, I got to get to this, and it actually runs. I don't know if you can see that, but the, the thermometer for it runs up and around over here. And then down where my big hand is, down in there, and attaches to the evaporator coil. So I have to get this top cover off. And I was doing some digging on it before I just start tearing stuff up. And there's actually two Phillips screws behind this foam, right under that tape. I don't know if you can see that there, but there's a screw there and a screw on the other side. And then I'm guessing, um, y'all gonna learn with me, take all these screws out here. And I should be able to pull this cover off so I can get to that switch a little better. So. And the next part, that's what you're going to see me doing. All right, guys, let's see if we can get this thing off here. I'm going to try to get those Phillips screws out first so I can show you what I was talking about. Probably be doing this with a screwdriver, seeing how it's old and plastic. But there it is, a little Phillips head under the tape, under the foam. So don't forget those or you'll rip the plastic out. Put the other side here. Set those where I won't lose them. Okay. And like I said, with this Chevy, it's metric standard, doesn't matter whatever they had that day, I guess. So these just happen to be quarter. I'll try to get a count of these when I get done here so that way y'all know if you got them all if it comes apart if not then I probably missed one and we'll go back through right. so now I've got them all laid out over here let's see all right so it's not wanting to come yet but that could be that tape holding it There you go, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. All right. We're going to take the climate control switch off. Is that what you call it? This is Mike, by the way. He came over to help me because he knows more about AC on household systems, but AC is AC, just a little different on cars. But we're going to work on, is this the climate control switch? Oh, expansion valve. Expansion valve. Get that off and put the new one on. And before I do, I'll probably flush this out too. any of them so three quarter so he's taking the little thermostat deal off the temperature and those are quarter inch screws and i'm fighting this thing Come on. okay reevaluate here oh. Three quarter, seven eighths, very tight. So how dirty do you think this one's gonna be? The other one wasn't too bad. I don't think it'd be that bad either. We just got done flushing the lines to the rear, and you said that was the suction side was dirty. Yeah. The smaller line was real, pretty bad. No, that was the discharge. The discharge. Well, one of them was really bad, and I think it's smaller. And uh. The bigger one wasn't too bad. It just took a lot of this stuff, so I hope I have enough left to even get some of it in there. Okay, that's one. Right. Looks like a 5 8 will fit on the actual unit for a holdback, and it does. Oh. We got that new part. So, looking at these... It's looking like I'm going to have to take this fitting off and put it on the new one. And it's a different style temperature sender. So we'll get this adapter off and put it on the new part. And it's probably going to have an O-ring, wouldn't you say? So let's see if we can get. All right. So 
put a new green o-ring in here sorry to show you guys and before i put it in i oiled it with the pag oil i put some oil on the o-ring but got new oil new o-ring oil in here and i'm just trying to tighten it up now and i can't find my 5 8 wrench anymore hmm. so right there that's why i bring them around Oh yeah, see that went right in there. And this one didn't fit real good with an O-ring or any O-ring. So when we pull a vacuum and it leaks, this is gonna be the first place we look because it didn't feel right. All right. All right, so that's good. He already got a new O-ring on here with oil on it. I gotta get the one out of here and he can put a new one there. So I'm just using the dirtiest pick I can find. Let me get these O-rings out. Yeah. And then when he gets that on there, we'll be able to put this in. And we're hoping, we'd notice that the one that came in the Rock Auto kit is nothing like the one that came off of it as far as the temperature probe here. So we're hoping we can get it to work over here to this header. And we might have to come up with something to mount it. <coughs> I'm gonna get both of these just started and snuck before we kill them. Okay. So those are in. How's it look? You gonna make it? I'm gonna make it work. Make it work. Am I good to tighten these? You think? Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So, seven eighths, three quarter. Hold these stuff. And I'm guessing they need to be pretty tight because they're pretty tight when we took them off. She hasn't came in here. Yeah, she was over here. That's my daughter Grace, by the way. <laughs> oh, where's Rose? Oh, she's on the couch. Hey, Rose. Oh, why is that not? Maybe I already got it close. She don't feel good. Can't really get a hold back on that one either. I don't really hold it though, is it? Okay. Give me that first punch. I'm going to be going up to Okay. All right. I guess it's tight. It doesn't look like it made up very far. All right. Let me see. The hose don't move. So. Zip ties. Not the zip ties. Zip ties. But. It... We'll use a, a white one. But it ain't going to be hot. It's not going to be hot on that yeah, end. This is all cold. This is what makes it cold here. Okay. You need another one then? Is it that over? So all this is doing is reading the temperature and it kicks this on or off. Off of what? So valve in there that will also all the It'll tell it when to open and close. And since we're already thinking some of this might leak because of the O-rings in this adapter, I'm just gonna hook the lines up in the back and we'll probably leave it down off of the roof when we pull our, our first vacuum of the system. That way, if we have a leak, this is going to be the first place I check. All right, so we're going to start adding the PAG oil to the system. Uh, doing a lot of research. If you guys are anything like me, you do some research until you get tired of looking at stuff, and then you just wing it, and that's about where I'm at right now. So I couldn't find anything that says exactly how much PAG oil to put in there. The compressor comes with seven, and it has a tag all over it not to open it. I know a lot of people recommend draining it and putting new oil in but I think it'll void the warranty if I mess with it because it has a sticker over it says not to open it. So we're gonna go with seven in there and then I'm going to add an ounce and a half to here and an ounce and a half to the dryer. And my redneck way of doing that is I found this brake clean cap, cleaned it, put pag oil in it and it holds 0.5 of an ounce. So three of these and each without making a mess. So I'm probably gonna spill this everywhere, but let's see. Actually, it's working pretty good. Okay, so that's one. Now let me go back over and 
fill up the rest. Yeah, that's how I was measuring it. Stole my wife's scale. Okay. No, you should probably be way more precise when doing this. But that's just not the way I do it. Okay. One more of those in there. Last one. All right. So, these little rubber pieces. These little rubber pieces came off the old one. I'm going to reuse them on the new one. You just stick them on. And the ones on top are actually how you mount it, so I have to use these. So that's what we're doing now. So let's pick it back up. I think it's a little bit there. Pretty tight fit there. Okay. You get the one on the other side. That one's definitely more comfortable. Might be one of those things where you just set it down there and set it in it and just push it. Yeah. Yeah, because that one's bigger. Okay. I'm gonna put this over there. Oh, I see how it goes now. So I don't want to crack it anyway. <clears throat> well, just so when y'all do it, this side goes towards the front of the truck because I just saw there's a hole there where this goes through in the actual core support. Alright. I think you dropped it. I dropped one. Okay, let's see if we can get it switched down and get these on. So those two square go on the rubber. Is it like way smaller? So you're just going to move it over and squish it in? Well, yes and no. But Bobo won't. Well, that's what I'm worried about. Let's see here. It's the same problem I ran into with the radiator. Maybe it came quick. Yeah. So this one went here. And that one. Will that one line up? So what we're, what we're going to end up doing, we're going to end up doing exactly what you're not supposed to do. And that's using a self-tapping screw. <laughs> they go this way, Mike. Is it cool? No, I can slide it over more. No, what it, what it is is this goes underneath like that. And then, yeah, line it up with that hole. Yeah, the whole thing is just slide this way a little bit. Your way? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, we're going to stick it out of the bottom then. Pull it back out and move it over and then do it. Are right, we going to do two sheet metal screws on both sides? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're just going to hold it. I can't move it over. Stick it up. And then move it no, okay. Why? Oh, oh, you're going to get it. I'm hitting the frame on two. So get it wherever it's not rubbing anything. Oh, I didn't get mine in there, Mom. I got mine in. I don't know. They kind of rushed me there. They're probably getting tired of looking at the back of my head, too. <laughs> okay, so we did. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Let's see. I'm actually hitting the core support, so I think it'll be able to stuff in there just fine when I get a screw in it. Stuff sure isn't going to work. I mean, you might have to do it on both sides. Just put a nut on it. Hmm? Put a quarter-inch nut. I know. I, I think the radiator got ins well. The radiator sits off a little bit, and we have we have a gap here, so it should be fine. I just put a quarter-inch. I got the quarter-inch nuts in my oh, like as a spacer for a spacer. Yeah, but I might have. I don't know how long sheet metal screws I got. See my wrench yet? <laughs> there we go. All right. So I think we'll pull it back so I can get this in there. Okay. There you go, Mike. That one's in. I just cut some uh, fuel line. That way it's kind of a cushion. Did you, you got that one in before I... All the way. Got it in now. You can pull it out some if you need to. That's good. We're good. I figure that'll be a better spacer than another something. That way it'll give it a little bit of movement. There we go. Okay. So next we'll throw the compressor on it. That sounds good. All right. I hold and you want a bolt. Yeah, actually, it's pretty. It was hard to get off. It's kind of snug in there. Had to use the meat feeder, you know. Um, Y'all order this. When I ordered it on Rock Auto, just so you know, they're going to be talking about grooves and diameters. The grooves are for the serpentine. How many grooves? I think this one was six grooves. 
and the diameter is two different sizes. So I just came out here and measured my pulley and I think this one was four and a half and they make a four of nine. So just look at your compressor to see what grooves you have, what diameter, and they have the B style if you have the B belts. But mine's 13. This is gonna be two nine sixteenths wrenches. We can use a socket maybe on this side. I have two up here. After we get this, we'll be able to get the 13 belt back on. We'll be able to get my hoses back in. We'll get the dryer on. Two wrenches. That's what I meant. That'll work. One of the ratcheting wrench. Oh, maybe that's the evil back. I'll tighten it. Go the right way. I think they. Hey, would it be easier to do the uh, radiator before the belt? No, it'd be way easier to put the belt on when the radiator's not in the water. Does that make sense? All right. <laughs> what was your. Um... You can work on holding that up, and I know where. Okay. Let me get it close, or unless you think you can hold it for a long time. Whatever you feel comfortable with. So that's on there. That's on there. Let me get the. Let me get past you real quick. That goes there. That goes there. Hold on. We're binding up down here. Both of those after you get it up. Okay. I probably already know this, but whenever you put a serpentine belt or any belt on, look back over it. Make sure you got it all in the grooves and it's not hung up on one side because it will fly off. Okay. We're good on all the pulleys. It ain't ran behind any of them. Okay. So that's it. All right, sir. Yes. Okay. So, what he's doing over there off camera, we got the new seals. He was getting the old ones off of here. And I'm about to clean this up, break clean it, and clean it all up so we can put the new ones on before we. This is what mounts to the back of the compressor. And he's also going through and putting new green O rings on all the hoses. All right. New. I don't even know if you'd call those O rings because there's metal on them, but new seals board. are installed. And. Got pag oil on them. We do have to use the new one because it's way longer. Okay. Because this is longer than that. Or the old one, sorry. And this goes in between. That's stupid. Yeah, it is. Ooh. Grab this one. And it doesn't fit. Which is crazy. Because it's the one that came with it. There we go. You have them on the wrong one. Let's see what happens. Get them in the right one. <laughs> it fits? Go. Yeah, it fits. So when you put them in the right one, it fits. So just do it that way, guys. <laughs> that one was a half inch. Fiasco's done. Freshly oiled condenser with a new O-ring. Is that O-ring the right size? Yeah. 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 They kind of went in there, you know? They didn't stop it. You didn't want any skinny ones with it, but you wanted a fat one. Well, it's funny you don't have it anymore. Yeah. We're going to have leaks all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, probably the three quarter. Three quarter, seven eight. Okay. No, you didn't have any more of the fat ones that size. <clears throat> three quarter on the uh, condenser side and seven eighths on the hose side. And make sure you use a hold back. You don't want to twist that hose off your brand new condenser. You know, that's pretty tight, Mike. What's up? Well, you got one problem. Why? You don't have two inventors, do you? I do, but it's already bent. 
No, I was thinking about no, looking making that. that one to a 90. I think that's how the old one was. I'm starting to think they gave me the wrong condenser. So you know, I bought it for the AC ASCII on my old one. It's, like, it's got a 90 on it. I have. Oh, can I try to 90 that up? So the problem we're having here is the uh, condenser, the oh. one they sent me came down at a 45. You got the socket for this? Yeah. What size is that? 3 8 3 8 or 7 16. So I got to get an O-ring for this one. And mine's supposed to be on a 90. That's what I was saying. So we got to make the hose fit the new condenser. It's a 10. Metric standard, metric standard. So it was mounted to the fender well, but because of the way the new condenser is, we probably won't be able to reuse it. Before we put that back on, I need to put the, before we attach. Is there a time right now for it? Yeah, you're going to leave it in there. Just in case. Just in case. We need to put the orifice tube back in. The new one. And this one has black o ring already on it. So I think all that green black o ring crap's crap. This was supposed to be a retrofit system. So. so, new and old there. Well, like this, but yeah, definitely needed to change that. So don't do your AC without changing these out. And I'm gonna, this thing was a pain in the butt to get off, y'all remember? So I'm going to put a little bit of the pack oil here, one, so I don't rip this O-ring, and two, to make it easier to install. That's the only one problem here. Yeah. It's just full of problems. Look how short it is, or unless I'm missing something. It's probably short, because look at the other one. You can see how far it comes out. No, we, we can make it, Mike. See? It does come out. So let's take it back off and pull this out a little bit. Take some of the bent out of, Get out of it there because look, we can make it. And while you're doing that, you can show them over there on the camera what you're about to do. But I'm gonna put the orifice tube in the. So y'all can barely see over there, but I'm putting it into the bottom of the. Is that the evaporator coil? Yes. Bottom of the evaporator coil line coming out of the back, the black box on your dash. That's where I'm installing the orifice tube. It has a snug stop, so it should be in all the way. Right, Mike? Yeah. And he just custom made that tubing there on the fly. I don't know if y'all caught that. <laughs> Gotta go down. Like a lot. Let me get this one made up. You know? Yeah, let me take some of the nutting out of here. Because that's what the problem is. I'm just worried about bending that thing so much with the hole in it. Okay. Because I don't have another one. Truck didn't come with extra AC lines. <coughs> Custom. Oh, look at that. Oh, that was a nice one. You sure those are the right over? That's the only one she that got. That's not ceiling. Look at that. That's the only one she got. I know, but look. That's not doing nothing. There's no way in hell that's doing anything. Because? Because I'm hitting metal to metal already, so how would that do anything? Oh. That's the problem I have is you don't they give you enough of the well, thicker ones. I got a whole nother kit over here. All right. I just had to do all this and then have to go back and take every one of these leaks. Just gotta put a little bit of pack oil. So that'll be good. So um, put this one on the very bottom. Yep, that one goes there. We're just putting all the new green O-rings on between two kits that I have here from when I did my white kits. So we definitely need a bigger one here, Mike. So this is the one here that fought us, right there, right on the side of the high pressure side. About to do the rear AC line here. And then this is the hose with the two lines coming out of it that we had to modify a crap ton just to get it in there. Um, 
identify we got the little ring, which we do. And that does look like a 5 8. It is. So the rear AC line is 5 8. They're real fun to get to. You know, I got wrenches that will fit on that. Hmm? I got wrenches that will fit on that. That's four air conditioning. They had to split in it where you slide it over the line. That's stripping it like a son of a bitch. I got it. Oh, line wrench. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying that a little late, Mike. I just thought about it. I think it's 7 8. Good and tight. Right. So, the only Two thing we layers. have left is the dryer. And I got my high pressure switch to switch over, but we can do that after we probably install, make it easier to hold it for us. Oh, yeah. This was a 10 millimeter, so we can slide it in. And we got to put oil in it first. And we got to add oil. So, we'll turn y'all a little bit. All right, we add oil to it right there. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Let's talk it. 10 millimeters on it. Seven eight fits on one side when I did it, but it might be it's probably just one. Right? Yeah, we're just sitting there. All right. Yep. I just back up. Mm -hmm. Don't forget. Yeah. And the other thing, if y'all buy this kit, I just found out is it doesn't come with the port for the new style gauges. So I have to go back to the parts store and get an adapter before we can charge the system. There. Should be tight. Right. Wrenches, sir. Yeah, that should fit on something. Good luck. Oh, this big guy fit. I did find this one. Inch and a quarter fit on. This one? Yep. And I need a pressure wrench for it. Hold back. Hold back. Now the dryer matches the uh, valve cover and intake. Thing. But the old one was black, was it? Uh, no, it was just faded aluminum. Oh. It's just ugly. That's good. All right, sir. So now we just got this one. Oh, shoot. I forgot about that one. Yeah, me too. That's why I'm doing it now. I didn't think I'd double check you. Tool of multiple trades. All right. Good. Let's see how that comes off, Mike. So, this should have no ring too, or I think it just goes. We'll have to see when we get it off. But this is what we got to take off now. It's a pressure switch, high pressure switch, right? Should have like five eighths. Fits this one. I looked into buying a new one. Oh, it should be a straighter valve. Yeah, it should be. That's should be a no ring inside of the. Yeah, they do have an O ring. 
So we need to find a ring that size, a green one. No, so new one has to go over top of all those threads. All right, so it's on. Got the new, all right, new old part. Like I was saying, I looked into getting a new one of these pressure switches. And they don't sell this style anymore that I could find. And then you have to splice in a new plug. And there's nothing wrong with my plug, so I really didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. All right, Mike. So we should be sealed. Should be. So what's your thoughts on, could you pull a vacuum on the high pressure side or would it not work? Just to test for leaks today? Probably. Like I said, guys, I'm supposed to have a fitting here, which I don't understand why it didn't come with it because the kit advertised that it converted. But it doesn't have the fitting I need to go to a uh, new style gauge for our 134A. All right, so I know... It ended with us saying we were going to pull the vacuum on it, and like I said in the beginning of the video, we did pull a vacuum, and that's where everything went downhill. Uh, leak in the back, and after finding the leak in the back, compressor locked up. So at that point, it was just crunch time. I had to get this thing done. Uh, debating even putting this video out still because I wasn't able to finish the process and show you all everything, but I figured the amount of problems I had would still help someone else out. So what I did to fill it, and y'all can watch videos on filling AC systems, they're all pretty standard refrigerant in here. And how I did that is I just Googled the conversion for the R12 to R134A, and it came up to the six cans that you need to do. Um, I filled it, and like I said before, I didn't have the right hookups for the gauge, so I ended up filling it with just one of the nozzles you get from O'Reilly's off of their cans and I just put one of those on the 12 cans I bought filled it right into the low side and then hooked up my low pressure gauge and watched my low pressure gauge uh, I know I wasn't able to check the high side but it's been a few days now everything's working great so I think it all worked out and the old compressor is still going um, sorry I couldn't film that for y'all but I just want to let y'all know 12 the six cans end of here after we fix all the leaks that I mentioned in the beginning and changed out the compressor. So hope this helps someone. Uh, probably will end up posting it. And if y'all have any questions, I'm no means an expert or anything like that. But if you have any questions about the AC or anything else you see on this in the video, and you just leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. But thanks for watching, guys.